once again outside as we go inside. And we'll begin this morning with confession. We gather in the name in which we were baptized, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Does everyone have a, a worship bulletin? There are some more here on the table for those who may need one. Step right on up and get one. And again, there are communion kits, and at the time that we process in, if you're not processing in, feel free to take one of those and move to the Wagner Room or to your car and watch on YouTube and participate in worship in that way. We continue with Psalm 31 read responsibly by whole verse. <clears throat> Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my, my life is spent with sorrow, and, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become broken like a broken person. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I, but I trust in you, O oh Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant, save me in your steadfast love. The processional gospel reading for Palm Sunday is from Mark 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, Near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. 
As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Today is the Sunday in the church year that gets two names. It is Palm Sunday and it is Passion Sunday, or more formally said, the Passion of our Lord. We need look no further than the psalm we just read and the gospel reading we just heard to see the incongruity of this day. What mixed emotions Jesus must have had, knowing that the cheers of the crowd and the celebratory waving of palm branches would be a fleeting moment. I better enjoy it while I can, he may have thought, because Jesus knew where this ride was taking him. Like a roller coaster where you can see the track ahead of you and then more disturbingly don't see it anymore as it drops away. And the anticipation and apprehension increase with each click, click, click of the mechanism moving the train up to the crest. So Jesus feels. He feels it all the more since he sees all that lies ahead. Why, he even saw that this colt would be available for him to ride on and tells his disciples how to find it and who to ask to borrow it. Jesus sees that the drop of this roller coaster track does not come back up again and he will not be returning to the station for a safe exit. This drop will be the death of him and the mechanisms are already in place he can hear the click 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 of these events now moving him toward jerusalem toward golgotha toward a death penalty that the romans saved for the most hopeless and irredeemable of offenders as a warning to all others unlike a roller coaster jesus could have exited this ride at any time, but he chose to follow through for our sake. The click, click, click of this track will take Jesus to death and beyond death to hell itself. How incongruous that is to ponder as the palm branches wave, the cloaks cover the path ahead like a rolled out red carpet and the shouts of Hosanna fill the air. Internet search engines define the word Hosanna as a shout of praise or adoration and I suppose that is true. But the Lutheran Study Bible notes that Hosanna comes from the Hebrew word for save and can be translated as a shout meaning save us save us indeed the very name of jesus yeshua comes from the same hebrew root word save us jesus name literally means the one who saves now the incongruity dissipates because saving is what jesus is all about saving us is the reason 
for this roller coaster ride. Saving us is the reason to face death and to go to hell, not as one who has been cast there, but as one who will destroy the place. And then the roller coaster does come back up, and Jesus will be arisen. But we get ahead of ourselves. We've got to journey with him through death to get to resurrection. We've got to allow him to put to death our sins, our excuses, justifications, and prejudices, so that we too may be transformed and experience new life in Christ. We've got to get through this Holy Week first, and then comes Easter. Yet we can face the gory story. We can face the stripped altar. We can face the grimness of Good Friday, because the journey through it is worth it. When we reach the other side, and find that the crucified one is the resurrected one, and this one is the one who has saved us. So we can and should raise our palm branches high and shout Hosanna like we mean it. Hosanna, save us, Yeshua, save us. He hears our cries and he will save us. So let us now enter into the story of Christ's passion for us. Amen. We continue with the litany on page three. And then as we hear all glory, laud, and honor, I invite you to move inside. Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
including our bodies and even palm branches. Yes, it is the right thing to do. Just like I said outside earlier, we can and should raise our palm branches up and shout Hosanna like we mean it. Because Hosanna means save us. Hosanna, save us, Jesus. Save us. Hosanna! That's right. Jesus hears our cries, and he will save us. That is what today is all about. That's what Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil on Saturday, and Easter Sunday morning are all about. And we can't skip the bad stuff to get to the good stuff, because it is all part of the story. And we know that the story ends well. Let's hear some of the story of Christ's passion for us now. Okay, I'm going to read this. Good, we can use our ears in worship too, that's right. Thank you, son. Thank 
O God of the infinite and the finite, in Jesus you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified, joining in the praise that all creation offers you as you cause life to spring forth from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you allowed yourself to be handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice, sustain and protect soldiers, and guide those who command them that they may serve those in greatest need. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially those who mourn senseless shootings and loss of life in Boulder, Colorado, Atlanta, Georgia, Virginia Beach, and Henrico. And those we name now in the prayers of our heart. Grant respite and renewal to all in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, in your divine mystery, you embrace difference in unity, and you call your people to live in peace with all. We pray for an end to racial and ethnic prejudice. Free us from the dread of difference. Free the church from constricting traditions. Free our society from centuries of violence against the other. Break down the walls that separate your people by color, culture, or religion. Call us to repentance for our sins of racism and prejudice, known and unknown. Transform discrimination into a passion for justice. Guide us to nurture a society that embodies reconciliation and cooperation among all. For the sake of the one who embodies your love, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. great. Spirit of compassion, you called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. great. O Spirit of truth, you inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. We entrust those who have died into your tender care. Console all who mourn, including Nella Rocks and her family as they grieve the death of her brother Clarence, Linwood Lund and his family as they mourn the passing of his mother, and John Ritz and his family as they mourn the loss of his mother. In Christ you have chosen death and conquered it, Usher us all from death into life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the Passion narrative. We will hear the Passion from Mark's Gospel in two settings. We will hear the first 25 verses, which gets us right up to the point where it talks about communion and Jesus instituting the Lord's Supper. And then we will pause and have communion, and they will, then we will continue the Passion uh, reading until the end. Mark 
Mark chapter 14. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor. And they stole it from her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, whenever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city. And a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to, to say to him one after another, but surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. I invite you to stand and to get your communion uh, kit ready as we move into Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, 
transforming death into life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are evil. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your sins. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. At this time, we have one verse of the communion hymn to meditate as we prepare to receive Christ in the burning and by to sit and kneel.
Amen. Our passion reading for Mark continues. Picking up right where we left it off. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I raise up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all the come deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Son, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The Spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. And they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away out of guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the living cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, 
And he was sitting with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found him. For many made false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, uh, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, to strike him, say to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You, you also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And then he went out into the forecourt. And then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse. And he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said to him before the cock crowed twice. You will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders, the scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. And then the chief priest accused him of many Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? To see how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. But then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted no more, Crucify 
Messiah. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him, and then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with them also taunted him. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Zema Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last. He said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph 
saw where the body was laid. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks be to God. 